Hello and welcome. I'm Kate James and I've teamed up with Medibank's Live Better at Home program to help bring you tips on how you can improve your mental and physical well-being during this time when we're all spending lots of time at home. The emphasis of today's session is actually about creating harmony in the home and in particular creating harmony in your relationships. I always find it interesting that the people that we love the most are usually the people that get to see us at our worst. And when we're all locked in the one household for a period of, well, it's been about a month now, hasn't it? Um, usually you start to see that there are some cracks that begin to appear. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about some practical tips to help you be the best version of yourself and help you manage your relationships in the best possible way. But I'm also going to touch on the research that's been done around random acts of kindness. So this can be a slightly broader reach, although we can apply these things inside our own homes as well. So first of all, let's start with uh, the emphasis on ourselves, because I think that this is where all of our relationships begin. I spoke in my last video about the concept of self-compassion, and this is actually really where we need to begin this whole process of creating more harmony in our homes. We need to begin by having a kind and gentle relationship with ourselves. So we want to be able to set up the expectation uh, that we're not going to be perfect and that we're definitely going to get some things wrong during this time. So in the last session, if you didn't see it, I spoke about the three elements of self-compassion. The first being self-kindness as opposed to self-criticism. The second being the shared experience as opposed to isolation. And what I mean by that is recognising that just like you, there are lots of other people out there at the moment going through the same or experiencing the same emotions and going through the same challenges. And the third of the elements is mindfulness as opposed to over-identification. And this means that we are able to just be with our experience without escalating it by becoming really fixated on it. So let's begin with this idea that we're going to change the way that we interact with ourselves. So over the coming days and maybe the rest of this week, just begin to notice how you're feeling. So check in and, and notice firstly how your energy levels are, um, how your emotional well-being is. And, you know, I've certainly spoken to quite a few clients over the last, uh, certainly over the last week or so, who have said that they're really beginning to notice the impact of being uh, isolated from friends, of not having their normal routine in place. And for those who are now homeschooling as well, there's that added challenge of literally trying to fit everything into your day that you otherwise would be doing and um, helping the kids with their schoolwork. So we, we want to just pause and recognise that this is a lot for anyone. Um, it's exceptional for people who are trying to work from home and who have their children at home as well. That's a really big load. Uh, and even just being under the one roof, I think, for extended periods of time and not getting that break that we normally get from one another puts a lot of strain on our relationships and it puts a lot of pressure on us. Uh, so really just check in, notice how you're feeling and as much as possible, practice that self-kindness. So when you notice that you're uh, being less than perfect, and I know that I certainly am at the moment, and, and I hear from lots of other people that they are as well, they're noticing that their fuses are a little bit shorter, they might be feeling a little bit more flat or a bit more anxious. Just know that all of those experiences are really normal and extend some of the same kindness to yourself that you would to a friend. So watch the way that you're talking to yourself. Um, you know, maybe say to yourself, this is actually pretty hard for you and that's completely to be expected. So then, as well as extending that kindness to yourself, if we think about random acts of kindness, um, I'm going to talk about this in a broader sense firstly and then we'll talk about how we apply it within the home. Uh, if we think about random acts of kindness, they're really those things that we do where we have no expectation of anything in return. And interestingly, there's been a lot of research about acts of kindness, particularly out of the US. So Harvard and Berkeley universities have studied 
how uh, acts of kindness impact upon ourselves. And they found some really interesting things, such as the fact that uh, an act of kindness can release oxytocin into the system and serotonin, actually. So two of these hormones that make us feel particularly good. Uh, acts of kindness can actually extend our lifespan, which is a really interesting finding, makes us feel more energised, brings us pleasure, and ultimately they make us feel happier. So when we're giving to others, we're actually also giving to ourselves. Um, and this, I think, is a really helpful thing, particularly to focus on right now that um, energy piece, I think, is quite a good area to emphasise because a lot of us begin to feel depleted and drained when we've got lots of external demands. Um, so when I talk about external demands, I actually mean probably internal in the sense that they're inside your home, but they're not internal as in inside you. So when we've got lots of people expecting things of us, and it might be your workplace, your family, your kids, extended family members, even friends who need support at the moment, sometimes we can feel a little bit drained and burnt out. And so knowing that this intentional act of giving can provide us with some energy is a really nice place to begin. I'm seeing lots of this around me and hearing lots of beautiful stories about acts of kindness at the moment that, are, that I'm finding really uplifting. Um, one which is very close to home has come from my mother-in-law who's 92 years old and who lives on her own. And she, a few years ago, she said to me, it's interesting as you get older, you really become invisible. And so she would walk into her local butcher or the fruit and veggie store and find that people who were serving just didn't really notice her. And she kind of took it in a stride. But what she's found over the last few weeks is that she's really visible. So when she goes into the supermarket, which she insists on still doing for herself, despite the fact that she's not really supposed to be out of the house, um, when she goes into the supermarket, someone will carry the basket for her. Um, people offer, offer to get her things. She's had a knock on the door from her neighbour who has lived next door to her for 28 years who said, if you need anything, let us know. So these really small gestures have made a huge difference to her life and I'm really hoping that they'll continue after all of this is over. I'm sure that you've seen random acts of kindness as well and, you know, this might be a nice opportunity to share some of those in the comments beneath the video. Um, it's always uplifting for us to hear the positive things that are going on out there in the world and a nice antidote to the negative news stories that we've heard a lot of over the past few weeks. So how do you do this within your home? Um, you know, it's easy to think about things that we can do for neighbours and, you know, the wider community, I think. But we can actually start to do these things closer to home. Um, and a simple way to do this is to really think about what are the things that energise or lift the people around you. If you don't know those things, a simple little exercise to do with your family is to gather um, some scraps of paper, just small pieces of paper, and for each of you to write five things on those pieces of paper that make you feel energised. So it might be simple things like, I love someone to make me a cup of tea, or I like someone to take the garbage out, or the kids might say, I like someone to read me my story, or I like sitting down and watching my favourite show with someone, uh, with one of the family members' as company. So once you've written those things on small pieces of paper, fold them up and put them into a container. And from time to time, just go and pick one out. And uh, you might find that you pick your own act of kindness out and then offer that gesture to yourself. I want to also touch on uh, how we create realistic expectations from this time. And as a good psychologist friend of mine suggested, how we can soften the edges of things a little. So that might mean uh, cutting someone in your family a little bit more slack after they've behaved in a way that's not normally uh, an expectation of yours. It might mean that we all come to agreement around how we use shared spaces, and I think this is particularly important. It is really beneficial for everyone, to fa everyone in the family to feel that they have some space that they can call their own. And if you're all sharing living areas or if you've got kids sharing bedrooms, 
even to just offer that opportunity for people to have a little bit of alone time can be helpful. But it's also useful for you to get together as a family and you might, um, you know, set it up so that you're setting the intention to create this opportunity to share what it is you need most at this time and what's challenging you. So we don't want to be overly focused on the negatives in terms of everybody just airing what's challenging them, but really thinking about um, each person having the opportunity to say something that would make this a little bit easier for them. And it might be simply that we just manage the way that we talk to one another or that we make sure that there are snacks available during the day so that people aren't getting irritable and hungry. Um, it might be that people need their, their own space, their own time. Uh, whatever it is that each of you need, it's helpful to be able to express that and to agree to really make room for one another's nuances. And so the final thing that I'm going to touch on is that it can be, this can be a really nice time to get into meditation to help calm some of those stress levels. And the lovely Emily Toner has some beautiful meditations on the Facebook page. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if she's shared a loving kindness meditation, but if she hasn't, I'm going to spend the last couple of minutes of this video just introducing you to this beautiful practice, which is one of my favorites. It is a, a very ancient practice, a very ancient meditation practice, and it is well known for reducing anxiety and depression, but also keeping your heart open and getting you into that compassionate and loving headspace. So we're going to do a short meditation together. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes now. And always at the beginning of my meditations, I suggest that you just check in with your body. Just notice how your body's feeling today. And you might notice where your breath is in your body. And see if you can just take a couple of deep breaths and just bring the awareness inward, quietening down the mind. It's pretty much impossible to have a completely silent mind, so we just want to do what we can to create a little more stillness. Stillness in the body helps to create stillness in the mind. And this meditation is only going to be a short version of the loving kindness meditation, but you can find longer versions of this online. So I want you to bring to your mind now someone you find easy to love. It may be more than one person if you find it hard to choose, and that's okay too. And with that person in your mind, I want you to imagine that you're going to connect with your heart space and we're going to send out this message of compassion. May you be well. May you be loved. May you be happy. And may you be peaceful. May you be well. May you be loved. May you be happy. And may you be peaceful. And just imagine that person, or if there's more than one person, those people taking that beautiful loving energy into their own hearts, feeling that lovely connection. And let's imagine now that we can extend these same wishes out to all of the people that we care about, all of our friends, all of our family. May you be well. May you be loved. May you be happy. And may you be peaceful. May you be well, may you be loved, may you be happy, and may you be peaceful. 
And again, just imagine that that beautiful loving energy is extending out to the people you care about. And in the same way that we notice how a random act of kindness makes us feel good about ourselves, just notice how this compassion meditation helps you to feel a little lighter and a little more energised yourself as you connect with that experience of being open-hearted. And we're going to finish the meditation by bringing some of this compassion inward. So this is now the act of self-compassion. Extending these same beautiful, gentle wishes to yourself now. May I be well. May I be loved. May I be happy. And may I be peaceful. May I be well. May I be loved. May I be happy. And may I be peaceful. And just pausing for a moment before we end the meditation, just being aware of where your breath is in your body. And again, just noticing that beautiful, loving compassion that you've awakened within you. And thinking about how you can take that into your day. So let's just bring a little bit of movement into our fingers and toes and then gently open your eyes. So I hope you have some tips that will help create a little more harmony in your home and remember to offer a random act of kindness, maybe one every day this week, even if it's just a really small gesture. Thank you again for joining me and remember to check out the tips on Medibank Live Better at Home to help you take better care of your well-being.